So look, everyone knows Charizard is extremely popular, but is it actually any good competitively is the question. Aside from Gen 8 Dynamax, it's never been historically top tier. However, our buddy Zard does have some things we can take advantage of. Its ability Solar Power gives it a 1.5 times boost in special attack at the cost of losing 1 eighth of your max HP per turn. This gives it insane damage along with its pretty decent base 100 speed. We strap on some heavy duty boots to negate the 50% damage you'd take from switching into Stealth Rock, and we've got ourselves a decently fast attacker that can take advantage of the sun. Alright look, you do not even need to check the forecast. It is going to be sunny out here because I've got the most heat team possible, literally, and we're going to see if we can get these bad boys to work. There's a couple of really fun Pokemon on this team. And hey, who doesn't love some weather action? Listen, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k and the support is greatly appreciated. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so here's the deal. I'm going to go ahead and lead off with the Torkoal. I want to set up that sun and ensure that everybody around gets a sunburn immediately as they decide to lead off with the Hisuian Arcanine. So. Most of the time you see this good boy is going to be running something like a Choice Scarf. Now, I know that I take a lot, about 80% damage from a Head Smash from this thing, and I know that I can essentially get up my Stealth Rock for free here. However, it's going to go for that Head Smash, and that ends up knocking out Torkoal. So, <laughs> that, that is not great for me. I, I just send out my Turtle to just get absolutely smashed, and uh, now we essentially, I lose my easiest Sunsetter. But what that does tell me is this is a Choice Banded Hisuian Arcanine. There's no way that kills me unless this thing is banded. So knowing that, I can essentially go into a nice little revenge switch with Victory Bell and try to get some, take advantage of the sun that I have up, at least for now. So I'm gonna go for the Sleep Powder here. I outspeed everything on the team with the Chlorophyll. We got our nice little doubled speed as they decide to go into the Galarian Slowking. Now this is naturally the best answer to Victory Bell's kind of dual typing here. However, I would like to show this fella some Vine Dining and that is gonna come in the form of these balls. I'm gonna go for the Terra Fire and in the sun, Weather Ball is an extremely strong fire move, especially with that Terra, we get that extra stab. So I figured this should be an easy two hit KO and the Galarian Sloking is something I do want to try to get some chip on early because it's just an annoying defensive kind of Pokemon here. So I put the old candle on the top of my head as an absolute fire hazard out here. And then we throw the Weather Ball at him, which is going to do a bunch of damage. This is Life Orb, uh, Max Special Attack, Victory Bell, and that is an easy two hit KO. So this thing does have to burn a turn of sleep, however, it actually tells me that it's going to go for a chillingly bad joke. Now, even when you're sleeping, it does actually give you that, uh, that little prompt there, which tells me they tried to go for the chilling reception, which does set up the snow. And that would be extremely bad for me because, of course, this team is based around the sun. So they're going to switch that thing out for two reasons. The first being that thing has regenerator, so when you switch out, it gets some health back. And number two, it would probably be good for them to keep that thing around knowing that they could potentially set up the snow and negate my sun and kind of ruin my gimmick. However, I go for the solar beam on the switch, uh, knowing that that would actually have enough damage to knock out the Slowking at the health that it was at and covers for a switch like this into the Volcanion, who takes over half from the solar beam and our dude Victory Bell is just out here ripping through teams. Like, this thing is actually amazing and nobody expects it, but uh, they're gonna end up going back into the Slowking here and on the solar beam, it's not gonna take too much damage, but of course, I can just outspeed and go for another Weather Ball here. So I am fine with this trade-off. There's literally nothing that they can kind of switch into Victory Bell and we actually have a really good matchup against their team. So I'm gonna go for one more Weather Ball here. It is gonna end up finishing off the Slowking, which is amazing because they weren't able to utilize uh, changing the weather over to the snow there. It is sunny today, boy. The forecast is not changing. And down goes the Galar Slowking. So they now get a free switch into whatever they like, and that is going to be the Chandelure. So this thing can come in and take any attack from me um, and likely be able to get off an attack. However, Victory Bell just puts bitches to sleep. I have two more turns of the sun. So knowing I'm faster, I have no reason to not just go for that sleep powder. I'm going to go for it. And of course, we end up missing, which is extremely bad because now this allows uh, the Chandelure to finish me off with a Shadow Ball here. They don't even have to go for that fire move. Them going for the Shadow Ball tells me they are likely going to be Choice Scarf, uh, which is something you do see with the Chandelure quite often. So down goes the Victory Bell, but that is fine because now I can go into the Sableye. Now Sableye is on this team for a few reasons. It has its Prankster ability, which allows it to go first whenever using a non-attacking move. So it's my secondary form of setting up the sun. Uh, so that, that's why losing Torkoal wasn't a huge deal in the beginning, but also I can be a nice little specially defensive wall. So they're going to end up switching out here. They know that a knockoff is likely coming, plus I can take an attack from that Chandelure, and they're going to end up going into the Mian Shao. So old Floppy Arms comes in, and we get the knockoff here. But most importantly, I also have the Will-O-Wisp on the Sableye, 
Meaning I can guaranteed be able to get that off and burn this thing, which is going to really... It's going to hinder what this uh, what this man Shao is going to be able to do to me. So luckily, I do land the will miss And Sableye is doing exactly what this little gremlin bastard is, is supposed to do. Just be annoying, honestly. So... What I have to do at this point is kind of consider my win condition. And Charizard in the back is actually looking super nice, but there's a few things I need to do in order to try to set that up. And that is getting some damage on things like the Arcanine. So from full health, this Hisuian Arcanine is actually a huge problem to my squad. And what I need to do is try to get up some entry hazards and potentially some chip on this thing. So what I'm going to do is end up going into the Quagsire. I've been conserving this thing because it's my best switch in to the Arcanine. Um, but knowing that it is Choice Bandit, it's going to do a lot of damage even to my defensive wall. So in comes Quagmire and they do end up going for the Head Smash here. And it does just around half, which luckily I can take another one here. And I have a couple different options, whether I want to set up some hazards or I can try to get some damage off on this thing. I imagine they're not going to leave the Arcanine in. So I'm just going to go for that Stealth Rock. It's going to really limit switches. And with that amount of chip damage, Charizard in the back can try to get some stuff to happen in the late game. So uh, they decide to go back into the Mian Shao, which is actually perfect. With this thing burnt, it's really kind of honestly a liability to them as they, they can't really knock me out here. And this is perfect for me because I can actually continue to set up some entry hazards. For whatever reason, the smoothest boy in the game is able to set up some spikes. And uh, we're just going to scatter some Legos over there. And that's going to be... Uh, honestly really nice because their entire team is going to be affected by that and just any amount of damage is going to set up this late game for me so they go for the high jump kick and with that burn it is not going to do much we are able to take that extremely nicely and there's a few reasons why we want to keep the quagsire around and the main reason at this point is because of their um the quackoval that is a very scary pokemon for me at this point and i am sitting at half health here i can probably conserve the quagsire uh, to still be a pretty decent check to that thing with the water absorb it's super nice so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna switch right into the save light now i know they went for the high jump kick and if they would like to fuck around and find out they can actually just high jump kick right through my little guy here and so i bring in the save light because i can also end up setting up the sun here which is what i need to do so they actually go for the u-turn they predict the switch nicely and that allows them a little pivot into the save light. however especially defensive save light actually has a really good matchup um, against a lot of their team. So they end up going into the Chandelure, who likely does have a two-hit KO on a Shadow Ball here, but what I can do is actually just go for a knockoff. Now, I really need to try to think about how many turns of the Sun I'm gonna need for that Solar Power Charizard. So rather than going for it now, I'm actually just gonna knock off here, and that should end up actually knocking out the Chandelure. So they go for that Shadow Ball, specially defensive, little Lilo and Stitch over here is able to take that nicely and a knockoff is gonna knock out the chandelier. So that is amazing, we get that thing out of the way. And we are in a pretty good spot here to try to set up my win condition. Now, patience is key. A lot of the time in Wi-Fi battles, I can see uh, kind of the, the win condition here, and that is gonna be the Charizard. However, I do not wanna try to set it up too early. I need, I need basically the amount of chip damage on their attackers like this Arcanine that I need. So Arcanine comes in, it gets hurt by both the Stealth Rock and the Spikes, and that puts it at a reasonable amount of health. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna switch out and I'm gonna go into the Tropius. This is essentially just going to be a little sack action, which is perfect because once Tropius goes down, this allows me a free switch into the Quagsire, who we know can take at least one attack from this Arcanine and I can get either an Earthquake off or force them to switch, which allows them to have to come back into the hazards and then Charizard can win the game. I'm running out of resources at this point, but with the Charizard in the back, I assure you, we I, I feel pretty confident in this late game. So uh, I do go into the Quagsire. It's looking really close on the damage. However, them being locked into the Flare Blitz actually helps me out because uh, that does a little bit less damage than the Head Smash. So I actually just end up going for the Earthquake here to try to end up knocking this thing out. However, they're going to commit the Terra and go for that Terra Water. So getting rid of that four times weakness to the ground uh, is going to allow them to take an Earthquake here. And they fire off a Flare Blitz, but of course, Quagmire is thick as a bowl of oatmeal, and we're able to take that nicely. And then the Earthquake is going to get some chip on this thing. But that is exactly what we needed. I'm totally fine with that amount of chip, because now Charizard can easily come in and finish that thing off after being able to outspeed. Thankfully, it is not Choice Scarf. So I just let them finish me off with another Flare Blitz here, and now I'm down to two Pokemon left. I have the Sableye, and I have the Charizard, and those two boys are absolute homies because the Sableye can now come in for free and I can set up that Sunny Day, which is going to allow the Sun to come up for just enough turns to hopefully allow Charizard to have enough damage to sweep their team. So at this point in the match, we're feeling comfortable that I've done everything I can to set up what I need. 
And now it's just time to execute, baby. I go for that sunny day. The sunlight is going to be harsh. The grannies are like, ah, oh, shit. Bring back out the, the sunscreen. And he does finish me with a Flare Blitz. So, of course, the Flare Blitz is boosted in the sun. But you know who does not give a shit? That is the OG Gen 1 legend. Charizard comes in with his boots strapped on tight. And we are ready to make the dream happen. So, of course, with the solar power, we have insane special attack at this point and also coverage on pretty much their entire team. So, I go for the Dragon Pulse here. We are able to outspeed. And I essentially just Dragon Pulse to not miss there. And that finishes off Hisuian Arcanine, which is a huge threat gone. So, that is one good boy out of the way as we do take a little bit of our solar, da our solar power recoil, which is totally fine. Uh, now they're switching is going to be the Volcanion, and with this Stealth Rock and the Spikes, this thing is going to be very low in red, but also Charizard is in fact faster than our little donut friend here, and I just finish him off with the Dragon Pulse again, because now finally Charizard gets to be the, the Dragon Boy he's always wanted to. So, down goes the Volcanion, that is two down out of the way, and they have two Pokemon left. Zard has a funny relationship with the Sun, because you know, it does hurt him, but it also helps him out more than it hurts, because... Now I'm going to have enough damage to hopefully be able to finish the team, where the Mian Shao comes in, and this thing is looking pretty healthy. Another Regenerator Pokemon comes in at full health, takes a bit from the hazards there, but at this point what I can do, fire off a nice little stab Air Slash, I do connect, and that is going to be enough to knock out the Floppy, and we are down to one Pokemon left. They've got that Dancing Duck Quaquaval, but as the, as the OG starter, we're going to have to show them the business. This thing is the, the new kid on the block. And he said, hey, you're you're not Blastoise. This thing comes in, it is dancing around. However, an Air Slash should be enough to knock this thing out. So, I've actually been messing around with taking Solar Beam on and off on this thing. And this specific Charizard, I've been messing around with some Terra and Terra Blast shenanigans. However, an Air Slash just does the job, takes care of the Quackaval, and down goes their final Pokemon. Charizard with the late game sweep, you absolutely love to see it. And sometimes you gotta show some love to the OG guy. Even without Dynamax, we're out here eating. Listen, thank you guys very much for watching, as always. I had a lot of fun with this team. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.